Not so long ago, having a disability meant your voice often went unheard. Strictly speaking, we should not have heard of Margaret Blackwood. In 1938, as a young, intelligent and athletic girl, she was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. Like so many others with disabilities at the time, conventional medical and cultural attitudes left her with few options, a life limited to being housebound and isolated, or institutionalised and dependent. It was a life that couldn't add up to much. In a sense, if you go back to those days, you know, there was no sustained recognition of the need to create the welfare state, the conditions, the physical adaptation to buildings, the regulations required for the building of new buildings to, to give disabled people the chance to, to be, be properly mobile. There was no real, I think, uh, uh, recognition or work on that. Despite living in a society that trapped her in diagnosis and offered only bleak prospects, Margaret Blackwood would become a voice for the ignored and forgotten, the mentally and physically disabled. I felt there was no future for any disabled person. Nobody was there to help, really. There were odd pockets of... <laughs> I was going to say odd pockets of resistance, but there were all odd pockets of help. But the rest of the world was resistant. There was nowhere to go and live. There was no training. In 1966, Margaret Blackwood established the Disablement Income Group Scotland. The organisation fought for more living allowances for the neglected civilian disabled. In 1972, the Margaret Blackwood Housing Association was founded. Its aim was to help disabled people live in accommodation designed around their needs. In 1974, dismayed by the slow progress of government support for the disabled, Margaret Blackwood organised the March on Wales, where a thousand incapacitated people in hospital beds and wheelchairs alike took to Princess Street. Their demand simple, we exist, help us to live. As Margaret said later, the crowd were stunned. In 1976, the first Margaret Blackwood Housing Association house was formally opened by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. In 1977, ever aware of the demands and struggles a disability can inflict on an individual, she created the Blackwood Trust, which was designed to provide personalised care for those with special needs. She was starting from the premise that, in fact, we should be aiming to create housing, create workplaces, create a welfare system which meant that disabled people were not at a disadvantage insofar as one could achieve that. So you really you're trying to create a, 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 a society, create a situation where a disabled person would not be held back by their disability. Against the backdrop of political apathy, her radical spirit and relentless campaigning ensured those who should be listening, listened. It ensured that a person from a background of incapacity and pain had the same rights as an able-bodied person. It ensured the opportunity for countless disabled people, then and now, to have a home and to belong to a community. Today, Blackwood provides 1,600 homes, four care homes, care at home and housing support throughout Scotland. Blackwood's DNA is rooted in listening to people and giving them a voice. So what are people's experience of Blackwood? It gave me a lot of adaptations in the house which makes life a lot easier. And it makes living in the house a lot better. You don't have to struggle with things and they, they take, Blackwood takes their time to listen to you to get the adaptations and make sure you get the right adaptations to lead a better life. You can request, you know, if you have an emergency or or uh, repairs that need them done, or if you need uh, uh, some advice, you know, whether it's uh, benefits or, or just general housing advice, then they're at the end of the phone and they're very, very, very helpful. If there's anything ever needing done, um, Blackwood as an association usually have no uh, a problem with either repairing it or upgrading it. It's definitely, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And I like, I go out with the staff a lot as well. Blackwood's helped me a lot to be more confident and confidence in myself and trying new things and stuff like that. 
because from Blackwood I've done my power chair football. Because we've been with Margaret Blackwood for, for a long time, we've had uh, lots of different housing officers and uh, yeah, uh, I found them extremely approachable and th they care and they listen and they, they get things done, yeah. I can only talk personally, my housing officer was brilliant. I mean, he was fantastic. He sorted it out for me. He sorted out a few, another couple of problems that I was having with the local authority. And uh, I can only praise him. I can't see much more. I mean, he was he was fantastic. He put myself and my partner at ease. He um, visited us two or three times. It was just a, a quick visit in a way. He came out, he talked to us, he told us what he thought he would, would happen. We have um, housing support um, and uh, we have girls that come in and help you in the house, help you keep the house to a standard that you like and the girls are absolutely marvellous. Um, I have Kerry or Dion and the two of them are absolutely great. Uh, they come in on Monday for three hours and a uh, Friday for two hours and apart from anything else, they're friends now, they're not just workers and that's, that's up to Blackwood. You know, that's a testimony to their self because they're helping you lead a better life. Whilst times have changed and new challenges and rewards have risen, the pioneering spirit that established Blackwood still remains at the core of its commitment to improving the lives of its tenants and customers and the never-ending effort to update and modernise. Blackwood's founding principle has always been in its ability to change, innovate and invest in new technologies. I would love to have a wheelchair that goes up and down steps. I would absolutely love that. The wheelchair that I've got now goes up to cupboards, but ones that go up and down stairs would be absolutely brilliant because then you can get to places where you can't get just now. You need ramps and sometimes, you know, ramps are not available, but if the chairs went up and down steps, love it, love it. Well, in the future, I maybe would like something that I can open my windows with. Uh, well, this uh, driverless cars is quite a good idea, which is which we're seeing tests of now. Um, that's quite interesting technology. If you could start with a, a proper footprint for a disabled house and then ask the tenants, where do we go? Here's the shell of the house. What do we put into the shell to make your life better? I think that the the technology would be uh, a bit more advanced than what they're actually putting into their properties at the moment because everybody has their own idea of what makes their life better. But I have some fantastic aids. I have an electric bed which I press a button with and it moves upwards. I have electric hoists from the ceiling, which get me out of bed or take me into the bathroom. I sit in what's called steel corsets. That sounds much worse than they really are, but they have steel bones to support me. I have a wonderful thing called a possum, which means I can press buttons, put on the light, open the front door, speak to somebody in the kitchen. And so people who are completely and utterly disabled as I really am, have quite a good life if they get the proper gadgets and instruments. Margaret Blackwood recognised that people can determine the path of their own lives if they are granted a voice. Blackwood will always aspire to go above and beyond this legacy, whether it is good customer landlord relationships, providing easy access to housing and support, or offering greater communication through online resources. Each service adds up to health, care and housing for the individual. She was a very important person in the whole campaign, and it's an ongoing campaign, to take the necessary steps, whether it's legislation, whether it's benefits, whether it's buildings, workplaces, homes, to make the changes, to give disabled people a better chance in life, to improve their, their, their quality of life. And she, she deserves to go into the history books as one of the people, and certainly as far as we in Scotland are concerned, one of the leading people, the key people, who made a real impact. Our lives changed. It was, 
uh, or a hundred percent better than where we've been living before. I mean, when I look back on what I had um, and what I've got now, I'm, I'm really quite grateful that it's a nice house, a nice area, nice neighbours. And Margaret Blackwood has got everything to do with that. I waited six years for the house that I moved into. This is my second home in Blackwood and I would recommend them to anybody. They help you, they help you lead a better life. If Margaret Blackwood was sitting here, she would she would still be arguing for things that need to be done and for perhaps some of the changes that were made to be to be abandoned. But in fact, uh, yes, she her legacy is the great progress that has been made.